Welcome to the second part of lecture 8. Uh, we'll continue our discussion of applications of diodes and uh, we'll present two uh, very interesting applications, the diode as a limiter and the diode as a clamper. Um, in the diode limiter or a diode application as a limiter, the diode is simply trying to protect a certain circuit by limiting the output voltage, say, from reaching certain levels. Um, or from going beyond a certain level. Many, many of the current electronic devices that we have nowadays, they all have diodes around them for protection. For, exa for example, here this circuit is called a positive clamber. It may help you understand what's happening. When the voltage is, uh, this is an AC voltage, so it's alternating. When the, the, this terminal is positive relative to this one, the, the source is trying to push current in the forward direction, so it's trying to forward bias the diode, it's trying to turn it on, and this is the same direction allowed by the diode. In that case, when the voltage here exceeds 0.7, the battery, the, vol the diode will indeed turn on, and then it will keep the voltage across it equal to 0.7 throughout the rest of the positive cycle. So in that case, the voltage seen by the, by the load resistor when the diode is on is only 0.7, and this will happen during the positive cycle. Now, when the voltage here drops below 0.7 and even becomes negative, it goes negative, then in the negative part, the source is trying to push current in this direction, okay, in the counterclockwise direction. But diode, as we explained earlier, will not, will not allow that, so the diode is open circuit. And in that case, the output is simply equal to um, v, v here multiplied by RL over RL, RL plus R1. It's a simple voltage divider. So, uh, and if we select RL to be, way, to be way bigger than R1, then uh, the output voltage practically equal to Vn. In other words, most of the voltage will appear across RL. So in that case, this is called a, a limiter. Uh, the, 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 the diode limits the positive voltage to only a maximum value of 0.7 volts, while it, it's allowing the negative voltage to go un, undisturbed uh, to its, to its uh, big value here, because the diode in this case will be uh, will be uh, reverse bias, so it represents open circuit. And this circuit is called positive limiter, and it's very common now in many electronic circuits um, to have diodes used around them as, as uh, or diode circuits used as protection circuits. Okay, this circuit here is a circuit of a negative limiter. It does the opposite to what we had before. Um, if this if this source here is, is 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 going through the positive cycle, so this means that uh, this terminal here is positive relative to this one, and this means that this source is trying to push current in the clockwise direction. Okay, but diode as you can see diode is trying to move current in the opposite direction. This is the only current it can allow. So the diode in this case will be reverse biased, and in that case we have a voltage divider. V out is equal to uh, V in multiplied by RL over RL plus R1. And if RL is is high enough, is way higher than R1, then V out will follow V in for the positive cycle, as you could see here, because the diode is off. Now, in the negative cycle, um, this terminal becomes positive relative to this one. So this source trying to push current in the counterclockwise direction. And this is the current. Uh, the, this is the current. Uh, uh, this is the current accepted or allowed by the diode. Um, so in this case, um, uh, the the diode will will turn on once this voltage from here to here exceeds 0.7. So this will be a positive. This this terminal is positive relative to this one. Once it exceeds 0.7, the diode will turn on and then it will keep the output voltage at 0.7 from here to here. In other words, the output voltage will be equal to minus 0.7. So this is what's happening here. So it, it limits the negative cycle. It's called the negative limiter. It allows only the positive bar to go through. It, negative, it limits the negative bar to minus 0.7. And then the next positive bar will go through. And then the negative bar will be limited to minus 0.7 and so on. So this is here is a negative limiter. And... Um, this this expression here simply try to tell you that as Vn rises to its peak value, the diode is going to be reverse biased. Then there is no current in the diode. Then simply a voltage divider. But if Rl is big enough, is bigger enough than R1, V out is simply equal to Vn. Now this part simply tell you as Vn 
goes in the negative value towards the, the peak negative value. So this is a peak negative value here. It's minus VBN, okay? Then the diode becomes forward biased. The voltage across the diode from here to here is equal to 0.7. So the anode will be positive than the cathode, and then the output is equal to minus 0.7. Okay, let's take a look here at this example. This is an example of a limiter. Um, we have, um, this is one kilo ohm here. This is another one kilo ohm. We have a battery of two volts connected to the cathode of this diode. We have, this is our input voltage, and this input voltage, um, it's an AC voltage, goes from minus nine, a big value of minus nine, to a minimum value of, uh, sorry, nine, it oscillates from minus nine volts to, vo to nine volts. So it's, it has an amplitude of nine volts would like to determine the output waveform in the circuit. Now, as I explained to you earlier, if this terminal is positive relative to this one, then this, this uh, voltage source will act really like a current pump. It's trying to pump the current in this direction, in the, in the uh, clockwise direction. But this is the direction allowed by the diode. So the diode will allow that as long as it's forward biased. And this diode has an on voltage of 0.7 volts. So... In order to be able to turn this diode on, the voltage from here to here will have to exceed 2.7. Why 2.7? Because we have 2 volts here, and we have plus or minus another plus or minus here. We have uh, another 0.7 here. So in order for that to happen, for the diode to be turned on, the voltage between this terminal and this terminal will have to reach at least 2.7. So as Vn is rising gradually and slowly is less is, is below 2 uh, 2.7 then the diode is, is open circuit okay and it's simply a voltage divider 1k and 1k then the output will will be equal to one half of the input okay so the output sinusoidal one half of the input up till the point where vn reaches 5.4 why 5.4 because at 5.4 the half of the voltage, half of the 5.4 will appear across this resistor, which is 2.7. This when the diode turns on and then the output voltage is fixed at 2.7. Okay. Now, so uh, so you can see it does with, before below below 5.4. This is open circuit and it's simply a voltage divider with a ratio of one half. But once the voltage here reaches 5.4 or above, the diode will turn on. This is kept at, this the voltage from here to here will be limited to 2.7. 0.7 from the diode and 2 from this, from this battery. Now for the negative part of the cycle, for the negative part, the, this uh, source will have polarity plus and minus. So it's trying to push current in the counterclockwise direction. But this is not allowed by the diode. So the diode will be open circuit and then V out will be equal to 1 half Vn. So for the negative part, the output follow the inputs equal to one half in value. For the boost bar, the output will follow the input until it reaches 5.4, and then the output would saturate will be limited to 2.7 volts. So, as I said in the previous slide, as long as Vn is between 0 and 5.4, diode will be off. And if it's off, then we have a voltage divider with a ratio of one half. So you can see the output voltage is simply rising from 0 up to 2.7. But once we reach 2.7, the diode will turn on. It will keep the voltage across the output equal to 2.7 until until the, um, the the voltage starts to drop again, and then the output will follow, will be equal to one half of the input. So this number here will go down to, um, to a lower value of uh, minus uh, 5. This one here will reach to minus 4.5. This is the minimum value, which is equal to one half the amplitude of the input. So, as I said, when Vn exceeds 5.4, the diode will turn on, thus limiting the output voltage. It will limit it to 2.7. For the negative, when the voltage drops below, when the input voltage, dro input voltage drops below 5.4, then the diode will be turned off, and then the output will be equal to one half of the input, and we reach a peak of minus 4.5 volts. Another interesting functionality of diodes is to uh, create clambers. Clambers or a clamber circuit is a circuit that will add a certain DC value to the, to the AC input. So it will cause a shift in the AC voltage, a DC shift, fixed shift. 
there is there are there, uh, there is a positive clamber that will add a positive DC voltage. There is a negative clamber that adds a negative DC voltage. Okay, the circuit that I'm showing you here will show you this uh, this uh, case here. It's very interesting uh, because once we we can do lots of interesting things once we add diodes and the capacitors together. So we'll consider first the case during the neg first negative half cycle. So here we consider during the first negative half cycle, and this should be clear why. If so, the the source will have the polarity positive negative. So this source is trying to push current in the counterclockwise direction. So the diode will turn on, and when the diode is turned on, the capacitor will start to charge, and it will charge very fast. Usually we select a capacitor C, which has a large value. Okay, but the but the the, the diode has a very small turn on resistance, equivalent resistance. So the charging will be very fast, and the char the diode will charge to the big value, the big value here, minus the drop that appears across the diode, which is 0.7. So the voltage between this side and this side will be equal to the big value. Say if if the, if the peak is is oscillates between minus nine and nine, so the peak is nine. So the voltage across the diode, the capacitor here will be nine minus point seven to be eight point three. Okay, um, so this is what's being said here. The capacitor will charge up to VBN minus point seven, the peak of the input, which is nine, say minus point seven. Now during when when the voltage start to rise again. The, the the diode will be reverse biased. Why is reverse bias? Because there's some voltage coming from the capacitor and the voltage applied to the anode will start dropping below, below that voltage. Then the capacitor, will, the diode will go off. It will be open circuit. The capacitor, uh, usually we select a capacitor with a large value and RL is usually also large. Then the product will give us a very large time constant, meaning that the capacitor will take very long time until it is charged. So for for 60 hertz or whatever the frequency we have, it's effectively not discharging. Okay, so uh, so we can simply ignore the discharging of the capacitor. The capacitor really can be treated here like a battery. It sh it was charged once during the first uh, negative quadrant. This part here it was charged, and then. It will take very long time to discharge, and during every negative quadrant, the diode may turn on again to 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 make it compensate any of the charge it may have lost. Okay, but the good thing about this one is that once this capacitor is charged, the output voltage measured across the load is simply equal to the input voltage plus the capacitor voltage, which does not lose it. Why it does not lose it? Because R C is large. RL is large, then their product will give you a very large time constant, as I explained earlier, and then the capacitor will be discharging very, very slowly, and effectively you can consider the voltage across it to be fixed. So the output now is the output is equal to the input voltage, regardless whether it's positive or negative, plus the capacitor voltage, which is which is VDN minus 0.7. So this effectively what the, this this did. It simply shifted up the whole waveform. Those the whole waveform shifted up, and only when we have a, a big negative value um, that you will get here a, a, a drop of minus 0.7 because of this difference here in, in this one. So this is really the idea of this uh, clamber. Um, so the basic idea is that in the first quadrant, negative quadrant, we charge the capacitor, and then the capacitor cannot really discharge later. Then the output is equal to the input plus the voltage across the capacitor. So you can see the whole waveform has been shifted up. But what is this has been clamped? And what is this new level? This new level is the capacitor voltage. Capacitor voltage is the big voltage minus 0.7. So when you reach minus, you, when the the waveform is at its minimum, you still get minus 0.7 here, but the whole thing will shift up significantly. Uh, so this is what's being said here, that once you have this, once you have done that, um, the uh, once you start applying here any other voltage, the the most of the time the diode is reverse biased, the capacitor sees only this very high resistor. It is it discharges very slowly. Effectively, it's a battery, and then the output 
is equal to the input plus the capacitor voltage. But what is the capacitor voltage? The capacitor voltage is equal to the peak voltage minus 0.7. So now the output is equal to the input plus the peak voltage minus 0.7. And this is why the whole thing was shifted up by the peak voltage minus 0.7. Okay, we have here another clamp clamper example. So uh, we have here a capacitor. It has a value of 10 microfarads. It's relatively large value. We have a load resistor of 10 kilo ohm. We have a diode. And uh, we apply the voltage applied between here and here is a sinusoidal voltage with, with amplitude of, my, of 24 volts. So it oscillates between minus 24 and 24. We would like to determine the output voltage across the 10 kilo ohm. This is the opposite of the circuit we had earlier. Because during the, po the first positive quadrant, when the voltage is rising, when the voltage is rising, what will happen? At one stage, this capacitor, will, this diode will turn on when the voltage exceeds 0.7. And when it turns on, it allows a current to go through. And when a current goes through, the capacitor will be charged to the peak. Be charged here to the peak. But notice the polarity. Because the capacitor is charging this way, the, the, it's, it's, it's really accumulating this sort of charge. It's having this polarity here. So the polarity, uh, it, it is known when, we, known when we deal with capacitors that if a capacitor is, um, if the current going through the capacitor is like that, this is a capacitor here. If the current going to do the capacitor like that, then it's making this plate positive relative to this one. And this is what's happening here. So, uh, so by doing that, we charge the capacitor maybe during this first uh, quadrant cycle here. So during this first quadrant cycle, the capacitor is charged. And it will reach a, a value equal to the big value minus the diode, diode uh, drop, which is 0.7. Now, from now on, the capacitor will have to discharge through this load resistor because when the voltage, the input voltage between here and here start to drop, when it starts to drop, then this diode will be reverse biased. It goes out from the equation, and then the output is equal to the input minus the voltage on the capacitor. Now we are not clamping up, we are clamping down. We are not making positive clamping, we are making negative clamping. So the, once, once the diode is off, the output, the output voltage is equal to the input voltage minus the capacitor voltage. So the whole, whole wheel form will go down. What is the maximum value that this capacitor will charge to? It will charge to 24 minus 0.7. So it was a char it will charge to 23.3 volts. And the whole waveform will be shifted down because we subtract from the input voltage the capacitor voltage. So as I explained, uh, during the first positive quadrant, diode will turn on, allowing current to go through, and this current will charge the capacitor. The capacitor will charge instantaneously because this pretty much looks like short circuit to it, very low resistance. Then the charge time is very, the time constant is very small. The capacitor is voltage charged to its maximum value. The maximum value is the maximum of the of the sine. We have a sine wave. It's the maximum of this sine wave minus the drop across the diode, which is 0.7. So it's going to be equal to 24 minus 0.7, 23.3. So this diode is now charged to 23.3 with this polarity. From now on. Of course, we have we have the source. I'm not showing the source here, but of course, we have a battery, and this battery is oscillating with time. Okay, but from now on, the capacitor, if it wants to discharge, it has to discharge through this resistor, because most of the time the diode is off. The diode can only charge the capacitor, but if it if it wants to discharge, it discharge through the resistor. But the resistor is high in value. And the capacitor is usually selected to be high in value, so their time constant is too big. So the capacitor is effectively not discharging. So this looks pretty much like a battery with a fixed value with the shown polarity. So from now on, V output, the voltage across the resistor, is equal to Vn minus 0.7. And I'm sorry, it's equal to V output, V output is equal to Vn minus the capacitor voltage, which is the maximum voltage minus 0.7. So it's equal to 23.3 here in this case. As I explained, once the capacitor is fully charged, in all subsequent cycles, capacitor will discharge very slowly through through the uh, resistor. Uh, so effectively, it does not charge. We consider it like a battery. 
and uh, the battery will have a value of 20, 23.3. So the whole thing, so the whole waveform was shifted down. As you can see, the zero became at minus 23.3 volts. And the maximum this waveform will go up to is 0.7 volts. It was really the whole thing was shifted down by 23.3. And as a result, the, this voltage, the voltage at the output can go down to minus 47.3 volts. So there are so many applications in power circuits, uh, in hi hybrid cars, for, for creating such waveforms, uh, and so on. So there are many, many applications in electronics for, for such uh, diode circuits.